In lecture 61 to 64, we have discussed in detail how to solve the SSS circuits by phaser method. From today, we will discuss the power of the SSS circuits in the following four lectures. And then we will introduce the frequency characteristics. Based on the frequency characteristics, we will discuss the filter. Analysis of SSS, its power and frequency characteristics constitute the common ground of the following contents of this course. There are four parts contents in the following lectures. That is, resonance, neutral inductance and transformer, three-phase circuits, and periodical non-sinusoidal excitation, respectively. This figure shows all the contents about the SS circuits we will learn in this semester. I hope you can know the states of the knowledge in the whole system. In part one of principles of the electric circuits, power is either U times I or minus U times I. The positive and ne negative sign depends on the reference directions of the voltage and the current. It also depends on what we want for calculating power absorbed or supplied. But did you think about it? Voltage and the current are changed over time in analysis of ASSS. How to understand U times I or minus U times I now? In the following four lectures, we will discuss this problem. Along the idea of the introduction, we might as well do an exercise and discuss how we cannot write the product of voltage and the current directly. Please have a look. It is the exercise we taught in lecture 64. Here we repeat the key conclusions. We assume that the excitation voltage is 100 volts and its initial phase angle is zero. We can calculate Z1, that is this part, the total impedance is this, and the total impedance of Z2 part is this. Z1 and Z2 connected in series, so the total impedance is like this. Then we can calculate I1. Knowing I1, we can calculate U2 and U3 respectively. U2 is the voltage of Z1 and U3 is the voltage of Z2. Before continuing, we need to emphasize one thing. Did you find the impedance is used to be written as a form of real and imaginary part in the analysis of SSS? Because the real part of the impedance has a clear physical concept, resistance. And the imaginary part of the impedance also has a clear physical concept, reactance. But for the branch variables, such as the branch currents and the branch voltages, we are more used to writing them in the form of modulars and phase angle. The reason is simple. The modular of the branch variable shows the effective value, and the phase angle of the branch variable shows the initial phase angle. Well, we continue our discussion. After knowing the voltage and the current of all branch variables, if we simply multiply the voltage and the current, what will be the result? Let's have a look. For the voltage current voltage source, U and I1 have associated reference directions. We obtain a branch of numbers by multiplying them directly. It can be expressed by the form of modulus and phase angle or the forms of real and imaginary part. For Z1, the voltage and the current have associated reference directions. We also obtain a bunch of numbers in this way. For Z2, it's the same. So we got three sets of numbers. Do the three sets of numbers have any physical meaning? You see, they are against the physics concepts. Here, we calculate the power supplied by the source. That is the value. It's not equal to the sum of the power absor absorbed by the two loads. So through the simple example, we proved that it's wrong to multiply the U and I directly. You must keep in mind about it. Next, we will analyze carefully in time domain how to calculate the power in SSS of dynamic circuits. In time domain, I is expressed as a form of IT, U is expressed as a form of UT. For such a one-point network, U and I have associated reference directions, so it must be PA equals U times I. Of course, its unit is what? This power is called instantaneous power of the one-port network. Then we will take a look carefully. 
the instantaneous power of resistors, capacitors, and inductors. For resistors, we assume that that is to say, we think that the, the initial phase angle of the current I is zero. According to the relationship between the voltage and the current of the resistors, we have this. We might as well call this part UR. So we know that by using the trigonometric equivalent transforms, that is, we can find that the power absorbed by the resistor changes over time. We draw the waveform that is like this. The initial phase angle of the voltage and the current are all zero. The waveform of the instantaneous power absorbed by the resistor is like this. You can see that the waveform is always over the horizontal axis. That is to say, the instantaneous power absorbed by the resistor is always greater than or equal to zero. And also, we can find that the angular frequency of the instantaneous power is twice as much as that of the voltage and the current. For inductors, we might as well assume the initial phase angle of the current is zero. We know that the voltage of the inductor leads its current at 90 degrees. So we can know that. Here, we omitted the algebraic relationship between UL and I. Then we calculate the instantaneous power absorbed by the inductor. Here, sine omega t plus 90 degree equals cosine omega t. We also need to use the trigonometric equivalent transform that is. So we can get. Similarly, we can also draw the waveform of the instantaneous power absorbed by the inductor. We assume that the initial phase angle of the current is zero. Then the initial phase angle of the voltage is 90 degrees. The waveform is like this. All the positive part marks the power absorbed by the inductor, and all the negative part marks the power supplied by the inductor. It means that the inductor absorbs and supplies power alternatively. The sum of the power absorbed and supplied by the inductor is zero in a period. In addition, the, addition, the angular frequency of the instantaneous absorbed by the power inductor is also twice. With the foundation of the inductors, capacitors can be discussed by duality. Here we might as well assume the initial phase angle of the capacitor, so voltage is zero, that is, we know that the current of the capacitor leads its voltage 90 degrees, so we write the instantaneous power absorbed by the capacitor similarly. This one is changed into cosine omega t. And this part is also changed into sine 2 omega t. We draw its waveform. The initial phase angle of the voltage is zero. The current leads voltage 90 degrees. The waveform of the instantaneous power is like this. It also has a positive and negative parts, that is, absorbed power and the supplied power. The algebraic sum of the two parts is zero in the one period. And the angular frequency of the instantaneous power absorbed by the capacitor is also twice as much as that of the voltage and the current.